very warm welcome to all the participants of this in conversations series today we are going to discuss about a very important topic which i would say is the heart the soul the essence of yoga that of kundalini the serpent power i am sure we have all heard this word kundalini and it is used many times too but today let us try and understand what kundalini means let us actually try and demystify kundalini there are in today's times some people who would like to have a proof for everything and if they don't have a proof they don't accept it to be true there was a similar such person in the early 1900s and this person was a british judge He was posted in india in the province of bengal and he was known to be a very no nonsense tough judge who would look at everything and very quickly come to a conclusion and immediately give the sentence now one day it so happened that in his court came a case where there were two parties and there was a dispute over land the judge listened to both the parties then deliberated on it for some time called his stenographer and tell, told him okay take down the sentence the judge started dictating the sentence halfway through suddenly he changed his mind and said no 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 Do, scratch all that take a new sentence and he gave a sentence exactly opposite first sentence was land the dispute was in favor of one party and then suddenly dispute went in the favor of the other party and this kept continuing for some time and this person became very concerned because he knew that he was a very clear headed person once he deliberated on a stuff he, he made up his mind there was no changing his mind why is this happening and he was really very perturbed his stenographer was a bengali person he was observing his boss and smiling internally a time came when he could contain this british judge could not contain his state of indecisiveness any longer and he burst out what is happening to me and then the bengali stenographer he said sir there is nothing to be worried about you are not sick you are not, nothing is happening to your mind it is just that they are doing black magic and when the effect of one party becomes stronger you give the sentence in one team and when the other party becomes stronger your mind wavers into the other direction i mean this this sounded as uh, hocus pocus as it can get that somebody is doing something there and my mind is uh, being affected he said oh, it's all nonsense but that kept on happening and finally he uh, said looks like there is something in here because my mind is getting affected which it was not earlier so he sent the stenographer to find out and sure enough there was one tantric who was doing puja for one party and there was another tantric at a different point and when the pujas were completed the effect was coming in 
by his post, uh, he, this British judge, asked both the tantrics to stop their practices and then gave the judgment. But the judge, he was, you know, he was intrigued by all of this. He said, what is this? It is something which is having an impact on my mind and I cannot deny it because I have experienced it myself. They say that the proof of the pudding lies in its eating. You can theorize so much, but when it is actually happening to me, I know it is not hocus pocus. So then what is it? If, if there is some logic behind it, I need to find it out. And he started his journey of study of the Indian scriptures on Sanskrit, on Tantras. And he has become one of the most authoritative source on Indology and Tantric scriptures. I refer to Sir John Woodrow, who also wrote by the pen name Arthur Avalon. And this is a true story in his life, which changed his life forever. And he gave up the British ways. And eventually, he lived the life of a sadhak. And he has written books on Tantra. And he has very clearly said about the presence of all of these principles. And he has mentioned, and our scriptures of course mention this, that this is not just focus, focus. There is a science behind it. And that science is the science of Tantra. And the basis of that is this force known as Kundalini. And as the Kundalini awakens, changes start taking place. And this is known as the Tantra Marg, where a system by which the Kundalini can be awakened at a the rapid pace. This is the strength of the, if I can use the word, latent force which is present in each and every individual. Kundalini is a force. Is It is, you can say, it is a potential force which is present in each and every organism. And this stays in our body in a specific location. But just as if you press your adrenaline gland, you are not going to be able to get adrenaline out of it. The adrenaline gland needs to be stimulated. And when the adrenaline gland is stimulated, then suddenly adrenaline starts pumping into the body. In the same way, this knot, this granthi which is present in our body needs to be activated. And when it is properly activated, then it unleashes this force. This concept is not only there in Indian scriptures. In Indian scriptures, it has been studied. It has been dissected. It has been understood. And it has been mentioned in great detail. But in an encrypted manner. Because this is a, such a powerful force that if it goes in the hands of an inappropriate person, the society can be devastated. That is why it is encoded. And it is not that this knowledge is there only in Indian scriptures. Different civilizations at different points of time have spoken about it. Be it Scandinavian civilization, be it Latin Americans, be it those in Africa, be it the native Indian, American Indians. All these 
ancient civilizations have spoken about this. And there is great truth in these civilizations, the knowledge which they have brought about. Today, we will try and understand more about this in a simplified manner. This is a session intended to provide conceptual knowledge. Practical knowledge is not possible in such a short time. But the concept needs to be understood. What is Kundalini? Kundalini is a force which has great potential. So much so that you cannot even imagine it. In the same manner as an atom has got two ways of providing energy. One is through the electrons, the electricity, the electrical energy. But the electrical energy, no matter how strong and how powerful and how useful, is very limited as compared to the nuclear energy which is hidden in the nucleus. Now, you can tap into the electrical energy relatively easily. Today, we are working because of use of electricity. But nuclear energy is not that easy because nuclear energy is fraught with great dangers. And if we are not careful, it can destroy entire planet Earth. Imagine there is an energy 100,000 times more powerful than that energy, than this nuclear energy. How careful should one be when we are dealing with that energy? Kundalini is that energy. Kundalini is that energy which can take us to very great dimensions. But it can also push us down because it is the movement and this movement of energy is very closely related to the expansion of our consciousness, to the activation of the pranic force within us. They are very, very closely interlinked. In olden times, you might have read stories of sadhus taking water in their hands and sprinkling. It is shown as hocus pocus, but no, it is not hocus pocus. They are people who have activated that energy within and they use water as a means of transmitting it. We all know water is a very good conductor of energy. They use that and transmit it. They can use multiple ways. This is that energy which we are looking at. And because it is such a subtle force, because this energy is so beyond the dimensions of speech, of perception, of intellectualization. Therefore, our scriptures have spoken about it in a graphic descriptive manner and they have given beautiful form to it. We know the three forms, the three Devis. Can somebody tell me when we speak of the three Devis, what are the three Devis which first come to our mind? Uh, Swamiji, Saraswati, Parv uh, Lakshmi and Parvati. Parvati. Okay. okay. Durga. Durga. Which, Pali. Is, which is the Devi who captures the interest or captures the mind of all people? Kalima. Kali. Kali. So who is Kali? What is the depiction of Kali? How is Kali depicted? Force of energy. Kundalini. I don't know. No, no, no. How, how, what is the form of Kali? Destroyer. 
नहीं, 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 काली माँ का मूर्ति कैसे होता है उसका स्वरूप क्या है डार्क एंड क्वाइट अग्रेसिव काली इज फेरोशियस Kali is naked. Kali has skulls around her head. Kali has the tongue out. Eyes are bloodshot, and she is so full of energy that she can destroy anything in her way. That is the explanation. That is the form of Kundalini Shakti when she is awakened, and she has just awakened. She has. a very raudra roop which can be very destructive but when that energy is harnessed channelized then she becomes lakshmi she is beautiful she is splendorous she is very beautiful she is bestower of all resources physical mental monetary financial spiritual also and then she goes higher into sublime saraswati who is equally powerful but her abilities are on a very subtle dimension she is not the one who will take a sword and need to fight just with a pen with a mantra with different subtle methods she will get everything done that is saraswati it is not the description of any devi these are originally the description of ascent of kundalini when kundalini awakens how does she present and when kundalini is awakened with full control and she expresses herself then she is durga conglomeration of all so when we are speaking of the devis and the devatas we are not speaking of religious concepts that kali is the wife of mahakal lakshmi is the wife of vishnu saraswati is the wife of brahma no we are speaking of the activation awakening of kundalini shakti and it is only then that these devis become awakened so this is the first aspect which we need to keep in mind when we are speaking of kundalini now when we are speaking about activation of kundalini then the first thing which comes to mind is what happens when kundalini is awakened when kundalini is awakened then a complete metamorphosis takes place in the human system physical mental emotional psychic spiritual in all dimensions there is a complete reorganization which takes place burning away of the dross blossoming of the sublime they say the voice changes the form changes the abilities change everything starts changing but awakening of kundalini is fraught with danger when you are working with nuclear power forget nuclear power when you are working with simple electricity simple electricity is also fraught with danger if you are not careful if you take liberties then there is a short circuit and the equipment blows off if this happens with simple electricity what would happen with nuclear energy and what would happen with this kundalini energy which is 100 times 
more powerful than this nuclear energy. That is the reason why there are lots of checks and balances. And that is the reason why it is not common knowledge. To common people, let them think that it is hocus pocus. Let them think whatever they want to think, but it is not handed to them until and unless they are not ready because we can't afford to have an accident. If you actually analyze the lunatic asylums and those people who are in an uncontrolled state in the asylums the entire world over and if you analyze them you will find that more than half if not almost all they are in that state because the kundalini energy was awakened but it could not be directed correctly and therefore it had a destructive impact which threw them off balance and that's why they are they have landed up in a lunatic asylum you will see many times that a person with such conditions many times is able to sometimes perceive things able to hear things able to speak things able to look ahead at things why because those abilities have got activated within that person. Unfortunately, we do not know how to control it, how to channelize it, and how to maintain the balance. The moment the balance is lost, everything is lost. And that is why it is very essential to know how to handle this energy. This energy, as I said, is Kundalini and Kundalini comes from the Sanskrit word Kund in the pit, Lini sleeps down in Muladhar. There is a small pit-like structure where there is a gland, a small mole wherein this mole rests, stays and that is the place where Kundalini resides. She is sleeping over there. She is inactive over there and we need to activate her. Only when she is activated then she ascends. How does she ascend? She ascends through the pathways and those pathways are known as nadis. Nadis are not nerves. Nadis are not blood vessels. Nadis are psychic pathways which carry this energy. There are many. But for the purposes of Kundalini and understanding Kundalini, we have three pathways which are very important. The Ida the Pingla and the Sushumna. Now these pathways are blocked thanks to the various impressions, thanks to the various karmic influences we have had over various lifetimes. All these pathways are clogged not for normal functioning but for higher functioning. The normal functioning carries on. If the pathway is completely clogged, then life is impossible. But the pathway is open only at a very, very basic, basal level. And that function of the body continues. And as this energy flows up the pathways, there are different junction points where the pathways meet where the energy alternates, where something happens. These are known as the chakras. And there are some important chakras. There, now, there are a list of chakras which can be 
enumerated. But as far as Kundalini is concerned, there are few chakras which are important. The Kundalini stays in Muladhar. From there, she ascends to Swadeshthan, moves up to Manipur, up again to Anahat, to Vishuddhi, to Adnya, Bindu, and then ultimately at Sahasrara. And this is spoken of in scriptures in cryptic language. Many of you, I see, I have been work with us chanting the Lalita Sahasranam. If you actually analyze the meanings of that, you will find the entire treatise is on movement of Kundalini and what happens and what is the pathway. What The entire description is given. The description is based on that. Remember the words Muladhar. Muladharaik Nilaya Brahma Granthi Vibhedin. Manipuranta Rudita Vishnu Granthi Vibhedin. These are all words in Lakta Sahasrakam. Is it a text extolling a Devi or is it a text on Tantra, the Tantra of Kundalini? It is the highest text on the treatise on Kundalini. The Saundarya Lahari, another very powerful text on Devi. Composed by none other than Bhagavad Pad, Adi Shankara himself, speaks about this itself. This Kundalini stays and how does it move up? What are the points we have to be careful about? All of these factors are spoken of in very cryptic manner in these texts. What is the methodology? to awaken Kundalini. And when we have to awaken Kundalini, what are the factors that we have to take care of? Is it possible that I can get inspired today and from tomorrow I start working and once I start working, then I awaken my Kundalini? No. You need a Guru. No two questions about that. You need a Guru. And why do you need a guru? Because here there is an entire transformation within yourself. And mind you, this transformation doesn't happen with everybody. It happens in selected people. But these people are not selected based on the moral principles as society understands them or the ethical people as society understands them. Morality, ethics has nothing to do with this ability. This ability is completely different. And when this energy starts coming up, then you start getting various experiences. All the past starts getting activated. Everything starts happening. How do you manage that? That we don't know. That only a guru knows. And that is why a guru is of paramount is, is uh, paramount necessity in this field. Having told that, having made that very clear, let us try and understand few aspects of awakening of Kundalini. When the Kundalini Shakti awakens, then different abilities start manifesting within us. And before the manifestation of those higher abilities, you have the manifestation of all the negativities, all that which is Dirty, sinful, bad. That all starts coming up. 
in one of the text one swami has written his experiences on activation of awakening of kundalini as the kundalini was moving from muladhar and swadhisthan he says that he could he felt that he was standing in the center and there were very beautiful maidens all around him and tempting him all along and then after some time he had the darshan of ma parvati when he had the darshan of ma parvati he started desiring her as a woman she had it said very translucent dress so he started desiring and he was in a very bad dilemma and he did not know what to do and it is said that at that point of time this kept on happening for some time and then a point when he was just about to lose himself at that point of time he suddenly had the vision the face of his guru very stern face suddenly flashed in front of his closed eyes when he was having all this experience and immediately there was a transformation in his mind and he was able to do pranam to devi as ma and he says that um, all this is not happening outside it is happening inside and when that took place the energy moved and he said that energy has crossed swadhisthan so sexuality emotions anger aggressiveness all of these they will get activated how do you control them you don't know if you need to activate them if you need to manage them what is it that needs to be done you don't know we don't know and that's why we need the guru and that's why this science has to be practiced with utmost caution in the samudra manthan what was it that was happening the samudra the sea of unconsciousness is churned and the nectar and the divine stuff is expected that's why the devatas and the danavas they are all coming together truce but what is it that first came out poison swami ji alahal alahal the most potent poison of it all and everybody was scared nobody could handle it they started fainting they started losing only shiva took halahal out of infinite compassion drank halahal what does that mean the negativities everything what? that which can destroy our life when yes. you start the process of activation of kundalini it is that which starts coming up first and we don't know how to handle it that is where shiva comes in the adi guru he knows how to take it in that is what we have to learn and again if you look at shiva he took it in and placed it in his throat digested it there and held it there it did not affect his body he had that ability that ability we need to get but for that we need the grace so this is one important aspect of kundalini awakening and since it is so very powerful hence you should be very careful
there are different ways of awakening kundalini for some people it is by birth for some people they have to undertake practices to do that we can undertake different practices by which this happens pranayam is one very important means if you will remember what is the pranayam which we do most common pranayam which is known uh, all around is the pranayam which is sometimes known as anulom vilom pura karechak different names are given but swami ji decided to call it as nadi shodhan pranayam now why did swami ji call it nadi shodhan pranayam because the effect of this pranayam is it purifies the nadis it tempers the nadis it prepares the nadis for the activation and the eventual ascent of shakti and if these nadis are not properly worked with then suddenly you start getting illusions hallucinations somebody is speaking to you something is happening something is all these things and when we get various visions we feel oh wonderful 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 but then after some time we lose our balance because these are not prepared so the first thing is preparation and that is where the basic practices of yoga come into play asan pranayam pratyahar dharana yam niyam they are all very essential because when that happens then the energy starts coming up and swami ji has very clearly mentioned that it is of course possible to awaken kundalini shakti by various means some of them also are by herbs by drugs the fantastic experiences we get are because those these higher circuits are activated for some point of time and depending on which circuit is activated we get that type of experience oh i am in bliss but then you fall and you go worse those who have taken drugs they have mentioned this in they go on a very high but then they go into a very deep pit too you have a wave which goes up and then it goes down very dangerous so therefore herbs are very dangerous only a person who knows how to use it when to use it with what to use it only such experts can otherwise we can't you know there was a story of a plumber in one house you had the tap which was leaking and uh, everybody in the house tried to correct all of that nothing worked so finally they brought, brought the plumber in the plumber had a look took out one hammer and gave one blow the tap stopped and he asked for 100 dollars he said what for just one blow you are giving 100 dollars he said yes because in this one blow you know when to give the blow where to give the blow which what strength you have to give the blow all there are 101 factors if you want you take a hammer and hit it you just break the tap you are not going to be able to repair it is it that every time a tap is bad he takes a hammer and ha just hammers it and takes 100 dollars no you need to know when to utilize when not to utilize the leak which was there was very appropriate to use the hammer so he used the hammer sometimes he would use the spanner and open it and apply something else 
it is this knowledge this knowledge is what is crucial so just using of herbs is not sufficient you need to know how to use when to use with what to use all the details need to be known and swami ji had said very clearly in his books that while he is not opposed to the idea of other practices used for activation of kundalini the practice of tantra the practice of kriya yoga are the only strong practices wherein you can maintain the balance because when you go higher there is imbalance which can be created because it is a very powerful imbalancing force and if you are not careful it will throw you off balance and that is the reason why there are so many rules and regulations which are placed rules and regulations in diet rules and regulation in lifestyle rules and regulations in behavior why because when that energy is activated at that point of time it will throw you off balance if you have practiced before it you will maintain the balance the yam and niyam they are not moral principles they are principles for internal activation because when this energy comes up then what to do what not to do you need to know so these are some important points which we need to know when we are speaking about awakening of kundalini shakti and swami ji says that if you want to dabble in kundalini then an ashram setting is the ideal location because in ashram there is the concept of karma yoga selfless service when you have so much energy coming up within you don't know how to handle it karma yoga is the way you can handle that energy direct it in that direction this is something which is very essential the kundalini shakti is getting awakened but once it is going up you have also done lot of pranayam you have done all these practices so the pathways are clear the chakras are clear the nadis are perfect but when the energy comes up it starts activating so many things you don't know how to handle that energy so that you can handle the energy properly karma yoga is essential karma yoga is not so that your work is taken out of you no karma yoga is because this energy needs to be directed out that is why an ashram setting is an ideal location for dabbling in kundalini and swami ji very clearly mentions that we must go shanaihi shanaihi slow and steady because this energy has the ability to transform your entire being complete rejuvenation takes place everything changes but if you want to direct it in a proper direction you need to go slow and steady that is why slow and steady proper diet proper lifestyle regularity practice all these together allow us to activate the kundalini shakti so this is in a nutshell what kundalini shakti is all about and then sometimes there are some people who are born with this energy because in the past life they have undertaken sadhana and that sadhana has taken them to one level and from here they have to move ahead so i don't have to go to class 1 class 2 class 3 class 4 i have to start from class 5 and so many things start coming up very naturally very spontaneously very easily for such people it is very essential to be very careful because sometimes if you are not careful you can 
reverse all the gains you have made. And therefore, Swamiji has spoken of Kriya Yoga as the system by which you can do this very safely. A method by which activation of Kundalini, activation of the higher centers and maintaining the balance that takes place. Many times this channelization happens automatically and depending on the situations there is a very beautiful examples which have been seen. As we go about in life, the Kundalini Shakti is not just sitting in Muladhar. It can also move slightly higher. Based on that, abilities start coming up. I know of doctors. You also would have seen. You go to a doctor. Just coming face to face with that doctor. Suddenly, the ailments go away. What is it? Is it a placebo effect? No. It is this energy which is active in that person and has an impact. You have pranic healers in olden times who would just do something to you and your problems go away. What is it? These persons had their Kundalini Shakti awakened and they had the ability to transmit it across to you. Creating that change within that is the strength of Kundalini Shakti. This manifests as genius. You had Michelangelo. You and I cannot paint something like that. You had Kalidas. You and I cannot compose music like that. You have people who have awakened. And as the awakening takes place, there are signs and symptoms which are mentioned. Of course, that is beyond the scope of today's discussion. But there are very clear signs which are mentioned. When Kundalini is awakening, at Muladhar, on the higher level, you hear some sounds. As you go higher, some different sounds come. Some different visions come. It is all mentioned, of course, in a cryptic manner. But that is there and it happens. And there are people even today who have been able to see this, experience this. And the ultimate aim of yoga is to activate this Kundalini Shakti. Gradually, bit by bit, preparing ourselves completely for that. And once preparation is complete, then this energy flows. And when this energy flows, then we move from normal to super normal. There are 21 chakras, they say. The lower seven chakras are in the Pashu Yoni. The consciousness is regressed. The seven chakras are in the Manav Yoni. And then there are seven chakras which are in the Deva Yoni. We are in the Manav Yoni and we have to move from here. Our journey from Amoeba till human beings is not only the journey of physical evolution. It is the journey of evolution of Kundalini through the Pashu Yoni, through these chakras. And spontaneously, when you are born, without any effort from your part, you have this energy sitting at that level, which is the highest point for Pashu Yoni. And when there are great yogis, there Energy is at Sahasrar, which is the base for the next dimension. So this is something which we need to understand. This is something which we need to observe. And this is something which we need to keep in mind when we are practicing our asana. 
pranayam our mudras our bandhas our any yogic practices we need to remember that the ultimate aim of all these practices is finally activating kundalini this is how the spiritual journey takes place this is how the journey takes place through normal to super normal and for this we need to start small work very systematically if we want to avoid the pitfalls this is a path full of pitfalls one small step here or there and we can fall shurasya dhara so we have to be very careful but there is a system which we can follow and that is what system has been spoken of in the scriptures and what swami ji has been speaking about for a long time with this i would like to conclude my discussion on kundalini hari om tat sat namo narayan jai ho